Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. So, so we're going to answer it right here and address this for our fellows, Hebrews and Israelites, black Jews, Yehudi, those who make a claim, right? As we make a positive, right, an evidence, historical, biblical, prophetic claim to being the people of the book that's referred to as Hebrews, as referred to as the children of Israel, B'nai Yisrael, and was referred to as Yehudim, or in the modern, you could say, transliteration to English as Jews. But we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Jews. So we're going to answer this question. We're just hearing something on um, well, Garfield. <laughs> and brothers and sisters know there's some points that he's made that we definitely think we and know we can take apart. But there's other points that he makes that's, that's very interesting and even some that's very good, very insightful. You know, Isha... Shelly, you know, and I, Isha, Eshet, Oset, if you please, you know, and my wife, she was playing something on the um, YouTubes and I caught it, you know, I caught it from the, what we call the King's Chamber, you know, I caught it from my office and I said, okay, let me listen to it. So I actually was listening to it for a while and Garfield, you know, brought out some old, some old, um, lectures and debates then came in on trial and this particular point he made talking about the magi <laughs> and i must admit it was a very very good point that um garfield reed made you know i haven't posted a video saying you know yeah you know like we would like to give credit where credit is due you know what i mean and we noticed that you know our benjamite aka jamaican brother garfield he does the same thing you know from time to time Right. But here on this particular point, this question, show me where any of the Africans, as they say, or slaves or the, the Negroes, the black people. That's what we use the term black people, because if you want to get into African, it wasn't called African at the time. If you want to get into slaves, they say, no, they was not slaves, but the process of enslaving them, you know, making them niggas, coloreds and losing, further losing their identity. But he makes this point. And there's this point that has been made and also, you know, to Rob Bourne, Rob Bourne, Rob Bourne. <laughs> mm. Nation of gods and earth, but even beyond that, you know, to his scholarship and to his honesty as well. You know, the recent Shaka Ahmose or Shaka Amos and Captain Tazari, uh, that reason. But no, we didn't catch that right there. No, we didn't buy that so far. So, so I guess we probably won't see that. Maybe we still will. You know what I mean? You know, get a copy or check it out. But besides the point, besides the point, besides the point, besides the point, the point right here is to the question that Garfield, Rob Bourne, and a few others have made. Show me where the so-called Africans or the black people, when they brought them over to America or to the Caribbean, to the West, to the Western Gentile Hemisphere, to the Americas. We say the Americas because it's inclusive of even the Caribbean. That's what we say. We all, right, are so-called black Americans. Now, we're all blacks in the Americas. That's include the Caribbean, right? America, North America, Canada is part of the continent, right? Um, Central America and South America. But he said, prove where the black people that were brought over, right, on the slave ships, when they reached over here, or when they ever, when they came, when they first so-called came to the Americas, where they said they were Hebrew Israelites, where they said they were Hebrew. And you know what? Our Hebrew, they say, they say hindsight is 2020. Our brothers who call themselves Hebrew Israelites, you know, they should just admit it. You know, we, we, we should say, yeah, you're right. You're right. No, no. No, they did not call themselves Hebrews. They did not call themselves Israelites. They did not call themselves even Jews in the sense that we know it today, you know, in this latter day, in these times nowadays. No, 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 no. And they said, so you can't be an Israelite. You can't be an Israelite. Because they didn't say they were Israelites, but they did say they were from like West Africa and they did do West African things. That's what that's how that's how a lot of the so-called pro cometicist scholars out there like on the side platform dagger squad you know that's that, that's a point he made and that was a good point as i heard him play that again i said yeah. you know they should have just you know but they got caught up it's something that garfield also said he said that ones and ones get caught up in their emotions 
right? And true, sometimes you hear something and you begin to say, you know, you begin to get a little bit, you know, emotional. <laughs> but you have to put that under lock, stock, and barrel. You really do. You really do. You really do. Some of it's humorous. Some of it's like, ha, 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 ha. You got that. No, they did not call themselves, right, Hebrews or Hebrew Israelites, you know, or black Jews or black Hebrews or any of those other combination of things. No, 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 no. Of course not. So here's the argument. Say, okay, boom. Argument over. Argument done. You lost the argument. You lost the debate because... See, they set up a question. So let's answer the question, even though they might play the explosions and the thunder and all the other sound effects and do all that circus tricks. Just admit the question, you know, just admit the question right there. Now, people say, well, it's over. No, it's not over. You see, what happened is that ones fell into, let's take this off the screen. Ones fell into their trap. Ones fell into that trap. Right. Once fell into that trap. Right. It, it's a very interesting question. I call it, I mean, you know, I call it like a common sense. It's kind of a common sense question. But if you're caught up emotionally, you're going to miss it. And I heard this question again. I've heard them use Rob Bourne, use that question on ones and ones, you know, went in hard on that. <laughs> but that's just part of it. It's like what they call the battle rap. It's, it's, it's kind of a part of what goes on right there. You know what I mean? Because you get caught up in the emotion. You look around and people are cheering your opponent and you're like, oh, my, you know. So you you now try to find a defense right in the <laughs> in the indefensible. Right. There's no defense in the indefensible. You know, that's why sometimes they say, well, you got to take an L. Right. But if you take the real L. Right. You'll be all of these things we can, you know, we can address. Right. And we can speak the truth to it. It's not always going to be that, you know, we're going to be able to avoid, you know, avoid the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is that none of the or there's no proof. Right. Let's put that there. There's no proof that any of the ones who came off the boats right into this Western Hemisphere claim, you know, to be Hebrews or claim to be Hebrew Israelites. Now. Why is that? <laughs> Why is that, right? And does that mean because, 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 because we and others cannot prove definitively or positively or with evidence that any of the so-called enslaved, right, black people that are called Africans or, you know, so forth and so on. Right, because that term was not used. That's why we say so-called Africans. Kids want to know why we say so-called African. The term wasn't used. People people bank a lot of historical money and credit on that. When we're going back into past times, we got to know when that term became the nomenclature used by the Europeans, and then when we accepted it, right, in our you could say battle, you know, for self-identity, we've accepted that term. So be it nowadays. But in the past, we could say go like a couple of hundred years, four hundred. 400 years ago, that term was not the term we find in the documentation from the time. Yes, it's European documentation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. You know, but that's what we're starting from. From low degrees to high degrees. Chabarim, come on. Chabarim, help me. <laughs> you know, let's assist one another right here. But the, per the point of it, people say, well, that goes against your whole biblical narrative. That goes against certain of the camps, right, um, some of the camps, certain of the camps use that, you know, use a certain way of bringing out what they are able to receive as the biblical, historical, prophetic truth. They bring out an argument right, that when this sort of question is posed the way it's posed, it effectively might defeats the argument. And as and as of the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews and as a Hebrew, right? And also as an Israelite and also as a black Jew of the tribe of Yehuda. Let, let me point that out right there, all right? Why did I say it like that? I didn't say Hebrew Israelites. We talked about this kind of years ago. We understand how it came about, you know, to identify us in this latter day time in the so-called, uh, what they call it, the politics, right? You know, that's more like a political 
statement of the camps right there when we say well hebrew israelites and and babylon or the system sometimes they say black hebrew israelites because we're saying that the speaking to black people that the hebrews and the israelites now we're going to explain the difference between the hebrews and the israelites some of the so-called hebrew israelites can't explain the difference they have not studied that nuance they just accepted this new nomenclature so when ones like garfield reed poses like right, that question the way he posed that in some of the earlier debates back in the days, you could say the good old Garfield Reed days. If, if you, yes, yes, they're very, very interesting in hearing those things right there and hearing him, you know, say that's a chan. You know, I kind of laughed to myself. And that's when I said, I got to do this particular video and say, no slaves, no black slaves claim to be Hebrew Israelites coming off of the boats. Why? See, the why is important. The why, the why is important. So, of course, if they had admitted that back then, you know, we would hear explosions, you know, the sound effects that Sarnet and others play to basically show or horns or, or you know, some <laughs> something to basically boost the point that somebody has got to win on that because the other person seems to have conceded. And ones will say, why are you conceding to them? They were Hebrews. They were Israelites. They would even say they were Hebrew Israelites. They were Jews, black Jews. They, they were the children of Israel, like the Bible says. I'm not saying they were not the children of Israel, as the Bible says. I'm agreeing with the question that when they came off the boats, we don't have any documented evidence where they said that we are Hebrew Israelites. Or they even said that they were Hebrews, Israelites, or or. That's the, that's the point right there. We don't go beyond the point. Thank you, Brother Garfield. You know, just to remind us, because we have to be reminded. We have to remind ourselves sometimes. Somebody say something and you might emotionally respond. There's an ancient proverb, parable, my right, proverb that says that feelings make for good servants. Your feelings make for good servants, servants, but poor masters. You can even say your feelings and emotions make for good slaves, <laughs> but poor masters. Your feelings and emotions. But what happens is the feelings, you get mastered by your feelings and emotion, right? And now you become the slave. You become a slave to your own ignorance or your own unwillingness or your own misunderstanding even of the question of what's being posed, right? Well, of course. They just said, of course. None of them said they were Hebrew Israelites. Of course. But of course, especially, ring the alarm, yeah? Especially, right, if one is making the claim that it's based on biblical prophecy, right? Why? Well, let's get to the Bible right here. Let's get to the Bible right here, right now, because this will explain it right here. This will explain it. This will explain it right here, right here, right now, right now. We can go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17 and 4. All right, not to throw too many verses, but just use a couple of key verses. We could have gone to and we will, right, in a fuller full, go to the Torah, what's called the five books of Moshe, Moshe, where we have the consequences for disobedience, right, or what's referred to as the curses for disobedience. This is one of the main proof areas that have been used. Right. Not just over the past, say, 40, 50 years, but we'll say over the past hundred years, because we of the royal order, the Rastafari order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, we, the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah, go back to those roots. Right. Uh, back in the 20s, the roaring 20s. Right. And we use that as a particular we call that a jump off point. It's not the origination point, but it's when things really came together. Right? Yes, the Moorish Jews, the Moorish Zionist Jews. Yes, we link with them. Of course, we link with them. Those are the real roots, even of the later one Western, one Westerners, right? The one Westerner Israelites. And it's not a diss saying one West. We're all in the West over here, right? But the one Westerner Israelite camps at the ISUPK and other camps that have been out there for the past maybe 30, 40 plus years on the streets, right? Putting forth the general. Right, the general 
prophetic history view of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We black peoples, black, I would say black and brown peoples here in the Americas and the Caribbean. So here in Yeremia, Yeremia, Hermes, as he's also known, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse four, it says, and thou, even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Can you say uh-oh? Right. And thou, now this is speaking to the children of Israel. Let's, let's open up this verse to get into the context because we're not going to do like, you know, has been done, right? It says, what it says right here? It says, Jeremiah, Yeremiah, right? Yeremiah 17, right? The first part of the, 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 the chapter says the sin, right? And sin, right? Take it out just the so-called Western Gentile Christianity religious sense, the chata'a, the chata'a. Chat -a -a. What's the chat -a -a? Sin, sinful, and this is the BDB. Let's go down here. It says offense, sinful, sin, offender, right? Like almost like a criminal. But let's go to the H2398. H20 is on chat -a. Chat -a. What is chat -a? Chat -a. Right? Not hata. Not hata, but chat -a. Right? Hata on the chat -a. Right? It look, what's it? The BDB brings it out almost perfectly. To sin, to miss. Miss. Right? Miss me with that. Right, because when the so-called um, other tribes, right, of Africans, right, as they are called, or black people, the other tribes that conspired with the so-called white man, right, they were able to find us because we were those people that the scripture is speaking about right here. Right, we already were discontinuing. See, one of the one of the poor arguments that some of the Hebrew Israelites make. Right? It's almost like, well, we were just living over there, just, just practicing the fullness of our Hebrew Israelite lifestyle and everything else. And we was calling ourselves Hebrew Israelites. And then the other Africans saw us as Hebrew Israelites. They saw us as being different. They understood. You know, like even today, you go to Africa, they give you some, it, maybe it's not written down as of yet, but like oral tradition where they'll talk about something well old. And sometimes people say, oh, they're just making this up. But then some who go and research it, they really find out that, they, yeah, some of the story might have been embellished and, and you know how stories go on, but it's still based on something that really, really did happen. They keep these old stories, right? The old people's stories, not just in Africa, but we're using Africa as a point of reference right there. So they, they understood and knew. Even to this very day, we have things going on in parts of Africa. We say, why can't all Africans get together so forth and so on, like from over here? Then somebody can ask us, is why don't we all get together too? You see what I'm saying? Because even amongst us over here, there's different backstories. Sometimes the later generation are fighting each other based on some other stuff that went, they don't even understand what went on way in the back past. But some of the elders did. You see, that's before the white man recognized. Mm. He had to kill the elders in order to bring in his new story. He had to kill the elders. You know what I mean? He had to kill off the elders. You know, like you look at parts of Africa today, even Ethiopia, they say the majority of people are young, are young people. And then we wonder why they don't know about some of this history about Ethiopia that some of us know. Because that's the very same reason. They've killed off the elders. So they're missing something. They're lacking. It's like we use the term lacking, right? So we peoples, right, in West Africa, as it's called, who were brought over here are the Hebrew right peoples by and large. I'm not saying not all, not all, not all, not all, not all, but by and large are the Hebrew and the Israelite people. See how we say the and the others say say that's one thing. <laughs> that means that even you know we're all learning, we're all growing in knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Because even we had to question these things and say, well, how come nowhere in the Bible we find Hebrew Israelites like that? How come it almost seems to say that these two terminologies are related, but not quite the same, right? Now, some would, well, we're not going to go into what some would say. That's a, that's a topic for a whole other. Let's stay on topic right here. You know, so why was none of the Hebrew Israelites coming over here, <laughs> coming off the boat saying, I'm a Hebrew Israelite? That's a, that was an easy point, brothers. I know Garfield, you know, Garfield and, and, and many of them are, and Rob Bourne, they're clever, man. <laughs> it's like streets. They come at you hard to catch you slipping. Remember the word here, chata, chata, the root of chata, which means to sin or to, we would like to say uck up, right? Uck up, fornication on the crown of the king, F-U-C-K, to uck up, 
right? Because we use that word nowadays, like somebody, somebody ucked up. You know the word, somebody ucked up. That's like they missed. They were caught lacking. You know what I mean? Like you come to a gunfight and you got a bunch of knives. You got a bunch of daggers, right? Uh-oh, 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 what happened? You're caught lacking. You're caught lacking. You, you don't have what you should have in that situation. And the same thing to try to defend that they were coming off the boat, right? I'm a Hebrew Israelite and say, no, you, you're, 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 you're Kunta Kinte or something like that. No. <laughs> Even that whole Toby thing, that's a whole other thing. That's, that whole Toby thing. People have missed that. People miss miss the real essence of that, which shows that that Alex Haley knew much more than he really let up, let let across. But anyway, it's not about Alex Haley. Let's get back to the point. Miss the way, go wrong, and cure guilt, forfeit, right? But then you know the last one, purify for uncleanness. Now, in order to get into that explanation, we have to go into a whole Hebrew. Mindset. Remember Willie Lynch, how to make a slave, the, the slave papers, how they said to um, control language, take away their language from them. Because here's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of linguistics, right? Primitive root, which means in our studies, most likely so-called what they call Ethiopic or, you know, but still a part of the African, right, tradition, right, of us Israelites. Why? Because Hebrew is an Afro-Semitic language, an Afro-Semitic language. I'm waiting for them to try to deconstruct that because we got something else. But that right there, they, they have to get over that hurdle. Some of y'all think you'll have, yeah, I'll prove to you well, what that really means. That's not really true. Yeah, you, you, you try and you fail because you don't have the linguistic literacy. You, you got to get the linguistic literacy. I know there's a few ones out there that make a little funny comments and everything, but I give thanks. You know what I mean? You can't be all emotional about that. You know, hopefully we'll have a time to sit down and chat and reason and see what we know. And if we are convinced or persuaded, right, in the truth, we will admit that. Like we're admitting right here that none of the black slaves, right, none of the black slaves coming off the boat said they were Hebrew Israelites. We don't have no record of that. Right. And according to what many Hebrew Israelites are saying concerning the prophecy of us black people, black and brown peoples here in the Americas and in the Caribbean. Right. That goes against what the scripture claim, plainly and clearly says. Point, point, point. Jeremiah 17. The sin, the uckery, the fookery of Yehuda, of Judah, who, who the Hebrew Israelites say is Judah, <laughs> who they say is Judah. All right, so-called Negro. Okay, that's what we're going to focus on, where the Lord focuses on, right? The sin of so-called, yes, Israel's already gone in the narrative here. If you understand the narrative, the 10 tribes, so forth and so on. See, they even confuse those two points, right? And we've got into some reason. Hail up to Captain Azania of the ISUPK, you know, on Brother Rice Lawrence Davis podcast. What you know about God? And his chosen people. Well, that's a classic right there. That's like a holy grail, right, of, of potential unity among the tribes, right? You know, unity amongst Israel and even among the camps, right? Not saying that they won't be their camp and we, we, we're not who we are, right? But there is a common denominator. And what, we, what we're arguing is a common denominator. They could talk about Rastafari, talk about Hala Selassie, talk about this, that, so forth. So, okay, that's a whole other conversation there. Here we're talking about the sin of Yehuda, Judah. So we get into the root. If Judah is a Negro, right, then, 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 then we are Judah, right? Because our people have been called Negro here in America. We could go back to Geechee, Gullah, get down to, to, to the south, right? You know, the islands. We got islands like in the Caribbean. We got islands, right, in the south. So, so get off of that. See, this was showed our commonality, but you're still arguing the white man's point. But let's, to our point, the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart. Now, if you understand anything about the heart, let's bring up the heart. The heart is the lab. The lab. Lab is the inner man, the mind. So it's on their mind, right? Their, 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 their fuckery, their fuckery, right? Their fornication of the crown of the king. It's on their minds. It's in their will. It's in their heart. It's in their understanding. It's in their inner part. It's in their soul. It's in their thinking. It's in their knowledge, their pseudoscience. It's in their reflection, their memory, their inclination, their resolution, their determination, or lack thereof of will. It's in their conscience, guiltiness, or upon them conscience. Oh yeah, right? It's in their heart, moral, 
right? Moral character or vis-a-vis -vis immoral characters. Seat of appetite. Seat of what? You see with the ninth one right there? Nine. The number of Rastafari revelation, square root trinity. As seat of emotions and passions. As seat of courage. Mm. That's why you can see how even when our people right, were able to read the translations of the Bible and get a basic understanding, understand what the Bible was saying to them and who they were, like the Nat Turners and the others, this is why they rose up, right? No, it wasn't a perfect, right? It wasn't a perfect, you could say, revolution, but it shows why they banned the Bible from black people, right, for, you could say, several generations, because they had to figure out Right, because they had to recognize these are the Hebrews, these are the Israelites. We got to break them down more before we give them our version, our whitewash version, our trick knowledge. The trick knowledge, which trick knowledge right here, just in case ones don't know, right here, let's bring this out right here. The trick knowledge, let's go down here. Where is it? Where, where's that trick knowledge? Where's that trick? There's that trick right there. You see that trick? <laughs> the greatest trick, right? The greatest trick. The devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he was God. That's why they get so offended. Right, Rob Braun? When we say the black man is God, you know, the, the black man is God. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they get offended at that. No, no, how can you? Because that was the epicenter. Because that's what the first set of black peoples, like the Nat Turners, that generation, that still had something that was uncorrupted by the Wooly Lynchism. When they read it, they interpreted and they acted on it differently because they saw God, they saw the power, they saw the power, they saw the power, right, in them to act for their own liberation and their own redemption. But not all, not all, not all, not all, not all. Not all of them did because, see, the trick was working on some of them. That's why the ones who told on snitched on Nat Turner. You know that you know you should know the history. Study the history. You know, in every instance, there was always some so-called Negroes, some Judas, some Negro Iscariot. That's what we're gonna call them. We're gonna call them Negro Iscariot. Like I say Judas Iscariot, we're gonna call them Negro Iscariot. There was always some Negro Iscariots that had to defend my, you know, the trick. Right, the trick and the greatest trick ever told, right, or ever pulled. You, you know, you know what do they what do they call it again? Pulling the wool over what? The wool, the wool. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on for a moment. Need we get into a wool? Need we get into some wool right here? Do we got some wool? You know, is there some wool to pull? That do we have in the suitcase? You know, when we see the, the different biblical references and, 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 and likenesses, it says, it says, no, it's in the other suitcase right there, but the woolly here, you know, you know, those verses right there about the woolly here and, and, and Christ and so forth and so on. You know, people might say, well, no, that's a theological thing. You know, that's speaking about such and such. It's speaking about as above, so below. You're you, you like that one right there, as above, so below, right? Even these right here, if you notice the way the original pictures well, 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 they kind of messed up those. You guys see some old pictures because right now those so-called white Egyptians, you know, those Greco-Roman Arab Egyptians are, are messing up everything. When you don't hear the Kemetists, the Prochemetists, don't have no fight for them, right? And that's their so-called holy land. That's the essence of it. And they're allowing it to be raped daily and they get in part of the rape. You know, like somebody's raping, you know, who you say is your mom or your sister. And you're saying, well, look at her breasts. Look at her ass. Look how, you know, she's sexy. She's sexier than a white woman. But you only have the picture of her breasts and ass because somebody else raped her and then took pictures. And now you're talking about the... <laughs> you over... That's what a lot of the cometicists are doing. Because they never, almost never, they, they make it a little footnote, right? That should be your major thing, right? Do major damage on that. You know, and then ones will have some, you know, respect or some honor for you, respective, respectively speaking. So the whole brass thing, this is what I was talking about, the whole brass thing, right? What the Holy Bible says, see, see, because even today, so-called Negroes or Judahites or our fellow Israelites have enough sense to, you, you can basically see that. That's what these memes are basically showing. You can see that very clearly. I'm, 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 I mean, what's a, oh, that's racist. That's racist. 
But what, what about all the stuff that they said about our people? We're just saying that, that they lied. Even their racism lies. Their racism lies. But if you look at it in the plain sense, that shows how deep. You know when people have tricked out somebody? And I, you say this person is tricked. They, they, they won't be no problem. They've been tricked. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I think, I think they're going to be a problem. And you, and you say, okay, 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 watch this. And you do something, and I'm thinking they're going to get it, but they don't get it. And you prove to me that they've really been tricked, right? So like black Christians so-called today, not all, not all, not all, but a lot of them, they will, you know, they, they, they turn away. Oh, that's racist. Oh, no, no, you can't say it. it's, it's woolly here because it was, see, see, see some black man or woman got to be killed by some racist or something like that. You know, some racists who are racist Christians or something saying, saying, saying Jesus is white or some kind of stuff. And then some of the black people in the church might wake up. They, they, they might wake up. You know what I mean? Because it has been, been, been that simplified. There's some, something that's happened to us, and that's the Willie Lynch, How to Make a Slave, the control language and everything else that is written in there. If you can understand the science, right, the science of it. Because even that book, some things are kind of parabolical. But let's go into this right here, here, here once again, just to seal up on this right here. So we're talking about the heart, right? The heart. Just to understand what the heart means very widely for the feelings. In a figurative sense, the heart is very widely for the feelings. If you read that statement in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1, Right, talking about the sin of Yehuda is written, you know, you know, with a, you know, a pen of what? A pen of iron and with the point of a diamond is graven upon the table of their hearts, their feelings and emotion, and upon the horns of your altars. Right? Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. So, so now once we'll try to use this and say, see, see, the, the Israelites were, were, were just like the ones you want to call heathen or pagan, whether they're African or, or not. Because they're doing the same kind of, you know, you know, they were always going after other gods. Well, well. Yeah, that's that's the part. Of, that's the same thing. That, that proves our point. So even that right there proves our point. That's why I said the point about Hebrew Israelites. Then there were no Hebrew Israelites. None of the slaves were coming off the boat, calling themselves Hebrew Israelites. Not one of them said, "Yeah, you're right." No, they wasn't calling them Hebrew. Israelites. Why? You know, because he see because. To say that in the height of the argument would seem to give ones like Garfield or ones like Rob Bourne would give them like a, a a point. You know, like in a fight. In a fight, sometimes even the 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 boxer that you don't like, you know, you recognize he's he's good. He's good. Yeah. Or if it's a she, she's good. But in this case, like he's good at that. You know, you got to watch his right. Watch his watch his uppercut. You know, don't go that close into him. His footwork, look at his footwork, you know what I mean? You, you have to admire that. You know, that, that used to be called good sportsmanship. It used to be called good sportsmanship. But here's the verse. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage. You know what, what it means to discontinue? They used to be printing these kind of uh, kicks, you know, these kind of something. You know, you you know, but they but they, but they discontinue. They don't they don't do that no more. They don't do that no. What the discont? They don't do that no more. They they stop doing that. Shamat, shamat to release. Look what the word shamat. It means to release, to let drop, to loose, to rest, or to fall. So when our ancestors, right, so-called Africans and black people, and we're speaking to the prophecy and to those who this prophecy is concerning, the, the, the majority, not all, but the main body, right, had already dropped, had loose, you know, had released, has caused to fall and to fail, you know, had flung, look what it says, flung, fling down, Strong says fling down, shamat, fling down, and in, 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 in incipiently, to jostle, to jostle in a figurative sense, to let alone, to desist, to remit, to discontinue, to overthrow, to release. They let it go. So, of course, some of our, and, and notice this, notice this. See, this, this is how deep it goes, that even those Africans, the, the other tribes, I'm saying other tribes because the Hebrews and the Israelitish people, when we're going to who they are in the roots of who they are, they are an Afro-Shemitic people. See the Afro part? That's the African connection. Afro-Shemitic, even the language and linguistic is Afro-Shemitic, right? Unlike other Afro people or African Hamitic people, 
right? We have the Shemitic connection, right? Because we have black people, wherever water touches land, you find black people there, our ancient scholars. And, 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 and you know, history is kind of clear on that. It doesn't mean that they were from a particular nation as we call nations today, but it means that when a good study of them is done, we find that the black people, the black man, woman, and child was predominantly first on this planet Earth, right? Now, I know some may want to disagree with that, but, but even, you know, even the racists admit it's true. That's why they make up Mormon philosophy and other ideologies, right? You know, something that's out of this world. But talking about things that's on the ground, you know, to bring it down to where we're at on the ground, and thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. What is a heritage? Nahala. Nahala is possession, property, inheritance, heritage, property, portion, shear. Right? Well, what's the major argument? That we have been in a land that is not our own. We could get into the verses and the scripts where they say they should go from nation to nation, from people to people. In fact, we might have to just bring this up, that verse up as well. They will go from nation to nation, from people to people. Right? You think to this very day, even if we go to Africa, our people, we go to Africa, we set up in Africa, you know, for a time and we're there for a hundred years. You think the Africans who've been there for a thousand years won't know who we are? Come on now. Come on now. People who have immigrated and come over to America and they've been here for a while, right, are known to those who know. All right. We might now we just say, oh, that's a white person. And that white person said, no, my people came over here in in the ninth in the 20th century, 1900s, you know, to Ellis Island, you know, and I didn't have my people didn't have nothing to do with um, the enslavement of black people. And those people who came over at that time, truthfully, according to the history, they, they didn't. But, but but they get along. They cut a deal with the cracker. They cut a deal with the so-called white slave master. We see that with the Irish, even though they were, a lot of them were treated like so-called Negroes and N-words, right? And even among the mob, godfather of Harlem period of time, some of them tried to even use that, say, well, well, we've been treated bad too by the same like Anglo-American white man society. We've been treated, and they, and they were, right? But not as, right? Not as, you could say, worse or as bad, right? Because there were some obvious differences. You know, some of them were, were, were light enough, you know, I'm talking about historically over time and have kind of whitenized by mixture. Like we look at some of the Irish and some of the different Europeans and everything, you know, back in the 1940s, man, that wasn't considered white. So we have to understand that the white man is not even a monolith, Right. But because white people, or other peoples, right, who could pass for white, right, or could get down to white if they prove their allegiance to what you would call white supremacy or the Anglo-American world order. Right. And that's basically what we have right there. Well, let's get come on. Let's come out of that for a moment, because that's a little bit deeper right there. Let's go into this right here from Babylon to Timbuktu. All right, from Babylon to Timbuktu is one particular proof. It was brought out, right? But it wasn't brought out effectively by the Hebrew Israelite side. And in, in, in our, that's a good thing that ones like the Dagger Squad, Garfield, and others do, right? I mean, really truly review. Sinatra kind of he does it, but then he puts in his own opinionated thing. But anyway, be that as it is, it's this platform, so be it. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't brought out well enough because the first point, the main question that Garfield asked was not addressed. I know some of y'all be saying, who's Garfield? Uh, Garfield. So, yeah, 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 all of that. All of that and more, right? But the point is that there were no black people that came over in ships recorded that we can find in any documentation. And, I, and when I say any documentation, I'm including the Bible. Let me put that there on the beamer. I'm including the scripts. Right. I'm, uh, I, you know, we say blacks, the scholars prove that blacks are, you know, the real Jews. Right. Blacks are the real Jews. I don't know if I made a mistake right there. I just went to another point. Just just this point right here. I have to rewind it. But just this point that's right in front of my face where where our scholar right here, um, Rudolph R. Windsor, and some have tried to debunk his information so forth and so on because they just, you know, See, first of all, they try to make the, the Israelites the white people that the world has accepted later on. These are the ancient Israelites. Well, many of their own scholars show and prove that and, and heal up to Zion Lex, 
he brought forward that book and we got a copy of it where um it speaks about the invention of the jews this is that book particular book right there that it was like 740 a.d right when the so-called ashkenazi eastern european non-shemitic you know um peoples basically adopted like one almost like one half of the tribe adopted judaism and the other half of the tribe adopted islamism now that makes sense why they're fighting each other it's like a family affair right <laughs> You know what I mean? It's almost like if Rastafari Israelites and other Israelites, we all have a piece of land somewhere, and there's other people, say say other Africans who are not affiliated with Hebrew or Israelites or the God of Israel, the power of Israel, right? And we're fighting each other, but our fighting each other still keeps the land under us and not under them, right? Because we're not really down with them, right? You know, they, they are part of the proxy. We're the direct war, they're the proxy war. So half of the so-called Turkish, Ottoman, Turkish, they related peoples, you know, Hittites. In the Bible, they're the Hittites. I haven't heard none of them make this connection with the so-called Ottoman, Turkish people, you know, and the Hittites of the Bible. And this takes us all the way into the Torah, right, when we see these Canaanites. Because many of these tribes that some might consider pseudo-whitish today or, or, or not black in the black African sense, actually come out of the black seed or the African seed or the Hamitic seed. They come out of our seed. You know, you have black folks saying that, oh, black, uh, white people um, is recessive genes and it comes from us and we're their mama and papa and all that kind of stuff, right? Well, if that's so, then the Bible is actually accurate right there. When you talk about Canaan, right? Canaan. Because Canaan had 11 sons. One of them was Chet. Chet. Chet sounds like Chet. Yeah, right? The word for sin, right? Was Chet. Chet, right, was Heth, right, and those are the Hittites. Later on, we have the Ottoman, they're like the Turkish people, and then we see the Ashkenazi in seven, around 740 AD, right, a large part of that tribe of Eastern Slavic European peoples. What do they choose? Notice they're Slavic, Yugoslav, I mean, Yugoslavia, ah, ah, right, Th they adopted Judaism because they looked at Judaism. Christianity, right, or Islam in the 740 AD, you know what I mean, say in the 8th uh, century AD, right, and they chose Judaism, right, a few of them no doubt chose Christianity, but I'm talking about the large majority, right, the, the second largest, less large than the largest, chose Islam. This is why if you look at a lot of the, the so-called Middle Eastern Arabs and the so-called Jews over there, European Jews, you're hard pressed because like one can pass for the other and the other can pass for one. I'm using that as a point of reference to the Israelitish people, the people who we say being brought over here were Hebrews and who had discontinued Right, who had discontinued, you can get that on the LOJS.org, Lion of Judah Society.org, right there. Download it, download it. Yeah, so right here, from their portion, from their share, from their property, their inheritance, their occupant. You see, says, ocu you see where it says occupancy? If you go to a hotel, a motel, and it says no occupancy, what does that mean? That means you're going to have to go to the next hotel, <laughs> right? Or next motel. Why if it says no occupancy, you see what it says heirloom, heirloom. Notice what we say a lot of time, black people, you know, what, what do we, we all would like to do, you know, if we're parents or just people, we like to pass something on to our descendants or people who are from us or related to us. We want to pass something on. But, but a lot of us uh, got that no inheritance. I mean, the inheritance is we inherit the curses for disobedience. That's the only inheritance that's really passed on. Generally in a state, patrimony patrimony that has to do with the father right so we see black man down and they raise black woman up very high why because they know it's easy just to push her over right she, push not saying the black woman's a pushover don't get it twisted but i'm talking about what they do to divide and conquer us right portion heritage to inherit inheritance possession right so it says that thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage so now if this sin of yehuda of judah is speaking about the so-called european jews who only became jews in 748 a.d according to their own best scholarship 
We can use their own scholars to prove, the European Jewish scholars to, to prove that, Ashkenazi scholars, right? Then, who is this verse talking about? Have we ever seen the white Jews, so-called Ashkenazi, discontinue from their heritage? Have we ever seen them go through these things, that biblical prophecy, that other Hebrew Israelites have point? Have you ever seen that? The, the point that a lot of these, these whitewashed Anglo, uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant um, um, programmables, remotes, basically like to say, you know, is that look at the riches. They got money. Look how they get money. Look, look how rich they are. You know, look how they seem to be in control of everything. If you was the Jews, black people, nigga, you would be like them. You, you know, this, this is their mealy mouth argument. <laughs> but, the, but the scripture says concerning the children of Israel as a whole, and we can say the, the Judah and Israel. This is how the scripture speaks. Judah and Israel, right? It says exactly like this, that they shall discontinue. And he always says, I will cause thee to serve your enemies. That's why some of our people, when they came off the boat, they was talking some of this African stuff, some of this West African stuff, not Afro-Shemitic things, but talking more African stuff. Or Because they were lost. They had discontinued from their heritage. But the people of the land still knew where they were. I was watching a movie where it was like, somebody who was like either Irish or like part of the other white people that the higher class white people don't accept, like in the England, uh, you know, British dynamic shit, the political shit, right? And this one was trying to work his way into this thing, right? And he got very high, got very rich, very influential. But he was even told, they were even told later on that we still know you like, you could pass for white, but we know you're not one of our white. You know, and that's the same thing that occurred in West Africa with the Hebrew. See, they were Hebrew because they went from, what, nation to nation, kingdom to kingdom, land to land. That's what the scriptures points out, right? From Babylon to Timbuktu. So when they got off the boat, no, they were just like the other people, by and large. By and large. And I, I'll submit this to you, that ones like Nat Turner, we know he was an Israelite and a Hebrew Right, a Hebrew in his spirituality and an Israelite in, you could say, his blood, his DNA. Right, I'm talking about real DNA, you know, because when he and others that supported him read those verses in the Bible, you see, faith without works is dead. They had faith and they performed that work. The ones who snitched on him, right, and the ones who snitched on all of us, they show that that kind of so-called the, the the bad. Hamitic or the Afro, the African shit. You know, the, the part that our Israelite brothers talk about. The problem with their arguments that they keep in a, such a simplistic argument, right? Even if it's a cartoon, the cartoon can be true. But now when we start to get into details, we have to get into details. It's like the Bible, the scripture says, the scripture says, like the scripture says, you know, um, be children in wrath, but not in knowledge. It'd be children in wrath, but not in knowledge. I mean, we have to get into detail. So Garfield and Rob Bourne, that was a very good point. I think, I don't know what they were thinking in themselves, but it's almost like, let me see if these brothers are, are can't even think. And, and even when they said being emotional, brothers respond to emotionally, instead of saying, yes, you're right. And they said, well, why is that? How can you say they're Hebrew Israelites? Right? Because of prophecy. And the fact that they didn't come off the boat with any identification already showed they had discontinued. And because they had discontinued from that, that means that this prophetic word was in effect where it says, I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land. We served our enemies, right? In many cases, when we were in West Africa, we served our enemies when we came over here to the Americas. See, see, it is, people think it just began over here. That's, that's that goofy kind of thing that someone's tell you. Yeah, there were some of our people in some pockets, but I tell you this, this is why we have Israelites and those who claim to be Israelites in Africa today, and some of their claims are very valid because some of them kept to certain things. And because they kept to their heritage, Yahuwah Eloheinu, our power kept to his word and he protected them. That's why they're still over there. We can point to them over there in the continent today. You know what I mean? Because nobody asks that question. Why some of your Israelites came over here and some of y'all still over there? 
Nobody asked that. Because the ones who came over here came under the consequence or the cuss, the curse, the curse. They came under the curse for disobedience. Any more questions? <laughs> In the land which thou knowest not. Right? From Babylon to Timbuktu. Did we know Timbuktu? Did we know West Africa? No, we had to learn all that. Our ancestors speaking like that. Right? Why did all this happen? For y'all have kindled a fire in my anger. A fire in my anger. Which shall burn forever. Now forever, somebody say forever, 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 ever, ever. Well, the Hebrew sense of forever has a sense of time, long du duration. Like indefinite time. An indefinite time. It's going to go on and on and on. And according to the scripture, it's going to go on and on from generation to generation until there is that generation that seeks the face of the Abir Yaakov, the mighty one of Jacob. Yes, sir. Rastafari. So right here, 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 concealed vanishing point. Out of mind. It's going to go on so long. Like, like it's, it's, been, it's been forever since I've seen you. It's to say what? That we never seen each other because forever means forever, ever, ever, ever. In that sense, no. It means it's been such a long time. I can't even think how long it's been. Right? It's like it's, it's it's like a number beyond what I can count or I even want to count. That's the context right there. Right? That's the context. Thus saith Yahuwah, curse be the man that trusteth in man. That's what happened to us in West Africa. We was trusting in man, not just because others were men, but we was trusting in these other people's stuff. Even you now people would think like to get along, to go along, to get along, to go along, all that kind of shite. That's what we did. That's what we did, but it didn't save us none. That trusteth in man and make it flesh his arm. Right? We're trusting on flesh. You know what I mean? So you see, yes, yeah, some of our people did have some uh, some African tribal things. While sometimes some of our people did, you know, what it was, it was like even we look at the testimony of some of the slaves or the enslaved people, people, the black people who were enslaved, African so-called, who came over here. We see a few customs and a few not. It's very mixed. It's very mixed. It's, it shows that some people might have done one thing because they like to do this, you know, like, like somebody might have continued circumcision because they like to do it or because they recognize the hygienic value. It wasn't all connected. A lot of it was disconnected. I, mean, I know people point to those things to say Hebraicism in West Africa. Yes, yes, that's there. But if, if, it, if it's the, the, the argument that the others pose is how come it's not the way the Jews do it today or the way like in an organized sense, like they were an organized community. What they're not looking at is prophecy. And sometimes our brothers are looking at prophecy so much, they're not looking at the real history and putting the prophecy in the context of the real history. So they're saying things beyond what Yahweh Loheinu has said by way of the prophets. And then they get themselves caught up in a situation where ones like Garfield and Rob Bourne, obviously are perfectly right on that question because it's, it's been answered perfectly wrong. Right? Of course they were not. Right? Whose heart departed from Yahweh, from Jehovah. Right? All right. Right? We can go on. We can go on on this, but we're going to sum up on this last one. Um, let's see, nation to nation was a was a kingdom, kingdom and people. Right, we're gonna go people. There we go. And let's see what verses we have. Look, look at First Chronicles sixteen and twenty. And when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, from Babylon to Timbuktu. So we have from that seventy A.D. period of time, right. You know, we go through this in more details where some did not cross that 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 river, the river. You know, which river? Talk about the river of Egypt or the, or the river of Ethiopia. They did not cross that river. That's why I said from beyond the rivers, right? They did not cross that river. That's why we have certain communities over in East Africa connected with the Beta Israel and other communities besides that. Some of them have been absorbed. Some of them... Well, we'll get into more details on that, but we do have historical record of those. And we notice that in the East, we have a more consistent and in a, in a sense protected tradition, right? When, when, when they crossed that river, we were entering into so-called other Africans' land. We was entering into other Africans as Israelites, or as really we were more Judahites at that point. Right? Yes, Judah is a tribe of Israel, but the, the main body of Yehudi, that's why it says the sin of, of, of Yehuda, because they were the last ones left standing. 
All right, that brings us up to like the, the we could say the New Testament time, but the point here is they went, speaking about the Israelites, went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to, you see what it says, to another people? To another people? So when they ask the question, why would they come off the boat saying I'm a Hebrew Israelite? Well, first of all, the term was not used like that. You know what I mean? They did not identify as a Hebrew. They did not identify as an Israelite. They did not identify as a Judahite because they had gone from one kingdom. There was no longer a kingdom. We were under the, the so-called other Africans kingdom in West Africa. We was under the other Africans kingdom. See, even for those who want to say that, that the Africans had no choice and, and the white man was doing this and that to them, yeah. But they even admit that they sold, they sold, they would say they sold their people. But as we get deeper into it, it wasn't just their people. It wasn't like I'm a king and I'm gonna sell my mom and my wife, my, my children, or my, my my uncles, my cousins. No. I'm gonna sell, sell another tribe that the priests and the wise men tell me that they're on our land, but because it, there's an ancestral hatred among those who know. See, some places we find those who are Hebrews and Israelites and the others might get along and everything because the knowledge is not there. But when the knowledge is there, you find these incendiary areas where there's conflict, right? Because the plain, simple thing is, this is a nation that has come to us. They know who are their own people. Like the ancient committee or the ancient Egyptian, the Ryan Komet, you know, I mean, the um, Romu, they knew who were the Tarnessians. They knew who the Nubians were. Though the Nubians were black people. Right? They knew who different peoples were. They did not get caught up on skin color or complexion like we do under white Anglo-Saxon Protestant pseudo-supremacy. I'm not going to call it white supremacy. I'm going to call it pseudo-supremacy. Right? Because the almighty power is not in it. There is nothing supreme about it. Right? And nothing supreme about it. Right? And when his Psalm 105 and 13, when they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people. See, that's how that gets in Chronicles. I know Garfield done some research on certain books and I'd like to get a copy of his book because I want to go into, I know that Zion Lex had gone into a kind of a commentary on it. Very good commentary. But this is where that Chronicles verse actually comes from in the literary historical context. Right? Because it's something in language that you can understand. Like even if I rewrite some some Shakespearean language today, right? And I write it and I copyright it and it's copyright in a book today. But because it's Shakespearean language, somebody will say that I must have been inspired by something thousands of years ago. So that proves that yes, I wrote it today, but I wrote it based on something that was written yesterday. That's how we know. So those who try to say, oh, the Bible was only written back in 500 AD. That's the first time. No, you don't know what you're talking about because you don't have no literary Right. I mean, you don't have no linguistic literacy. Right. And you don't even understand. Well, you, about our thing. We're not even talking about whether they understand their own thing. Right. So you see this right here. Right. This is one of the main verses right here. These these two verses, which is basically based on this verse. Right. Get into that a little bit more. Right. 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 Right here. But few number. Of course, this is talking about what happened like concerning the past, but we also see this as a prophetic future. Now, when we go to chapters like, um, what is it? What is it? It's, it's Leviticus. People always forget the Leviticus verses, the Leviticus chapters. We're going to seal up right here, brothers and sisters, because I think we made the basic point. And if one say, oh, they did call themselves Hebrews and Israelites and Hebrew Israelites, but this shows the proof. And if the proof is, 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 is proof, no circumstantial. You see what I'm saying? No circumstance. See, the circumstantial evidence we have and the biblical prophecy we have, right, proves, right, that these were Hebrews, Israelites. But that's not the point here to prove that they were Hebrews or Israelites. It's to prove that Hebrew Israelites came off the boat saying they were Hebrew Israelites. You see, that is what the question was. And so, therefore, as a Hebrew or Israelite or Hebrew Israelite say, well, no, they wasn't because they had discontinued. They, and the Lord told them when you discontinue from it, this is what's going to happen to you, right? And this is what happened to them. Why do you, listen, 
if we were really just the same exact people as the Africans were, they would not let that go down. Because how come they didn't jump on the boats too? How come they work with them to, to, to select certain so-called Africans, mainly African Semitic, African Shemites, right, to get on the boat? They didn't sell their mother and father. That, that, that's what they try to give us nowadays. But there's no proof of that. Like when somebody, show me proof of that. Mm -hmm. Show us proof of that. If you can't show us proof of that, right, it's because it, it, it didn't exist. Right? It didn't happen. So these are the main chapters right here. These are the main chapters. Chapter Leviticus 26. Right? Leviticus 26. Right? We need to go to Leviticus 26. See, a lot of ones go to Deuteronomy 30. I mean, De Deuteronomy 20, 20, 28. Sleeker. Deuteronomy 28. But there's a few points we can make, you know, but we're trying to just stick to the main point right here. Right? That none of them came off the boat saying that we are Hebrew Israelites. Because we had already discontinued, right, from our heritage. You know what I'm saying? We had already discontinued from our heritage. You know? Um, and this kind of points out during the period from um, Pompeii to Julius, it has been estimated that over a million Yehudim, Judahites, fled into Africa fleeing from Roman persecution and enslavement. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves, or we can say of Afro-Shemitic right, people that they wanted to enslave. And this is speaking, you can check out the Luke verses right there. This is a very important book right here that goes into a lot of the details of it. And yes, it was written at a time right, where there was a limited, but still a lot of historical research. We need to follow up on this. I know a lot of ones would love to debunk this. Right? Notice how it says a history of the ancient black races. What? The history of the ancient who? Black races. Huh? A history of the ancient black who? What? Ancient races. Right? Black races, including the black Hebrews. We say it a little different. Right? Of so-called African people, including the African right, Israelites or the African Shemites as Hebrews, the Afro-Shemitic language. Right? Now, whether they were identified as Israel the northern kingdom or whether they identified with the southern kingdom you see that is totally beside the point right there so this is how this particular question right or question right should be you know should be answered we not behold right and we can bring it straight forward right within the prophetic you know and the historical what, what, what is available of historical evidence? Some things need to be inferred, you know what I mean? Yet some things might be circumstantial. I might say circumstantial, you know? And, and, and see, I'll be one of the first to really admit that some things are circumstantial. It all depends on what evidence we have. We have to use the tools that we have. And so this is nothing that is something that we just made up today or just happened even in 1970. Right, there's something that that even even continues, right? And a lot of times, our people like to give all credit to other people who even tell us that they came into it well after 740 A.D. Right? We have the Ethiopian um, Jew that's called the Ethiopian eunuch, or more correctly, the Ethiopian official in Acts of the Apostles from Cush, as it says in the prophecy, from all the lands where he has scattered us. Right? The thing we have with some of the ISUPK, they like to, to, to dismiss, or they liked to dismiss that. But I understand why they did. You know, it was to get across a specific point, right, in the argument, but does not dismiss our argument as Rastafari Jews, Rastafari Israelites. But here, this is for the whole family. You know, like they say, this is for the whole church body. You know, you see this, the Beyond the Rivers of Ethiopia? This one is a very good... You know, to show how we how we scattered, right? But that main river of Ethiopia is connected to the river now. So we have East Africa, right? That's so what I say, East of the river now. Once you went into, because East of the river now, we had Shemitic, Afro-Shemitic people, right? 
who had carved out a place for them, carved the place in the sun, and were ruling and administrating. So therefore, we knew that we would have a certain amount of spiritual, you know, religious, spiritual freedom there because we had like-minded people. We may not have agreed with, you know, like like as 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 Ethiopian Hebrews or Israelite Judahites and other tribes in, 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 east of the river now in territories that may be called generally Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, we may not agree with some of the Christians, you know, the Christianos, you know, even of the Solomonic Davidic lineage, but we had something in common. Yes, always, but we, well, we shared something very much in common right there. So we're not going to be so much. Per yes, I know persecution to the Israelites, Beta Israel of Ethiopia, because we are Beta Israel here of the Americas and the Caribbean. But to the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, yes, we understand that in some later periods of time, various different Ethiopian kings who also claim some Israelite, you know, link and relationship may have persecuted, you know, or, or treated, you know, badly. You know, there, there's issues. Those are not our issues. You see what I'm saying? Those those little issues, because we have our issues over here, East Coast, West Coast, no, up North, down South, you know, different, different hood. We have our issues too. And yes, I'm relegating the issues over there of the same caliber. It does not dismiss that there are basically one people, you know, because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But none of them, you know, came off the boat by saying that. That's why the Negro point, we need to not give up on that Negro point, right? Israeli enclaves of the diaspora. That's why it says to the four corners. We focus a lot over here on the Americas and the Caribbean and, and, you know, North America, South America, Central America, the Caribbean, which is important because that's where we're at. But then when we look to the east, we see the scattering, right? We see the scattering, right? The dispersed into Ham, into Ham, Ham. That's the Afro part. Cham would be the Afro part, or Cam, Cam, right? Not just Kemet. See, that's a, that's a pseudonym, but I'm not going to even go into that right there. That's a whole other point for a whole other reason, right? And how we spread. You see the arrows going to the west, right? Over time, right? Over time, historical time. And as time went on, by and large, we went more and more from our heritage. You know, it's just like we do today over here in the Americas and the Caribbean to go along to get along, right? You know, you know, we took shortcuts, right? And that created great scars, right? But this is who we are, right? So no, we didn't come off the boat like that. You know what I mean? No, we didn't. We were not in our ancient traditions. No, we were not, you know? But when we look around, right, then coming to today, right, there are more points of proof to the so-called Negro peoples in the Americas and the Caribbean as the prophetic, biblical, what the Bible is speaking about, right? What the Bible is speaking about in truth, you know? But if you have a particular political kind of, you know, many people have a political agenda, right? Because of some political agenda they have, you know, they might not agree with it. I mean, you even have ones that generally even disagreed, to, 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 like secular, like the, like the secular black Jew, Yosef A. A. Ben Yohanan, right? He still put together a very vital book for us who are identified as Hebrews or Israel and Israelites and, and we the black Jews, you know what I mean? Where it just points out historical documentation. Right? In fact, it's probably one of his best books. Right? Most ones who have read all these other books that he has put out fail to read this book, right? Or try to dismiss what he's saying in this book. Because what what he's saying in this book based on the evidence he's pointing to, is as, and we say it's more. This is the only actionable book in all these books that Dr. Ben really wrote. Because we still have people to this day conti continuously, right, that have been living, when I say continuously, from the awakening. I, I didn't even speak really so much about the awakening, right, because there, there was a time of awakening, right, but the other peoples knew who we are, but we had forgotten who we are because of that disobedience. Right? He says, if you want to forget because of that disobedience, so be it. Right? Are black people the result of the curse of Ham? No, there was no curse on Ham. Let's just put that on the record right there. There was no curse on Ham per se. There was a curse on Canaan. And when you recognize that command, 
Canaan is where we get the white sea coming out, you know, in other words, the white gene beginning to manifest from that seed. Dominant recessive genes, DNA science also proves it. Okay, let's just look at history. Turkey, the Ottoman Turks, even the European Ashkenazi Jews related historically. I read their books, man. They talk about their links. They like to, the, the white so-called Jews like to make their links, you know, to the Ottoman Turkish and the Turkish and the Eastern Slavic, Slavic, you know, um, origins, right? And so when we link in them now with the Ottoman Turks or the Turkish people, Turkey was Hittite land, right? Back on the wall paintings, Ramses, he had this whole battle, the Battle of Kadesh against the Hittites. That was them then, right? And then we look at the European Jews, this is them today. So that right there is a tribe of Canaan. So, so the ones that, what's the name, was fighting, Ramses or whoever, whatever his name was that was fighting, the Battle of Kadesh, he was fighting a, a tribe of Canaan. But then if you go back to the biblical narrative, we can see that they were a related people, but that don't mean nothing. Look in Africa, tribe versus tribe. Look around the world. People can be related, right? Yeah, way back, if you don't go way back. But we're talking about today. So then speaking about today's language, in today's language, from today's perspective, no, none of them came off the boats, right? Saying, right, that, yes, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Why? Because they had discontinued from their heritage, right? So how did they know they were Hebrew Israelites and knowing who the, I, I explained that already, you know? And we got some more evidence to come out with, but I think we have, you know, we have gone through this, you know, pretty much. Right, you know, pretty much bringing out some basic, just a basic fact, right, and some other facts, right, the truth of the matter, right. So right here, 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 here. You know, this is about this is about truth and politics. You know, politics, but it ain't no more about politics. It's all about polytricks. That's a Rastaman thing, right? Saying right there, politics, right? It, all that's politics. Right, get out of politics. Right, the true facts of the matter is that they knew who we were, and we was running from. You know, who we, you keep running and running and running away, but you can't run away from yourself. Right, you must have done something, something, something. Our ancient peoples did something, something, something. They didn't want nobody to know about. But you know one thing about indigenous peoples. The, 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 they got long memory. Now, true, it might just be their memory, and it's not like historical in that sense, but what ones who have investigated the native peoples, like even native African people's long memory, they find that there is that truth. There is some truth to that. And this is what we're saying even about we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, I and I, Ross, I don't approve this message. Shalom.